Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the McGonagall Boxing Podcast. So obviously, Charles Martin, Luis Ortiz went down last night and as predicted, it was a bit of a circus show, wasn't it? With um, Charles Martin, to be fair, as I thought he would do, he started confidently, he started strong and he definitely got the better of the opening rounds. Um, he kind of, now I don't want to call it a lucky knockdown, but he definitely caught Ortiz by surprise. He timed the right hand well, and it kind of caught Ortiz uh, half on the side of the head, so half on the back of the head, and they're the punches that do you damage. Um, you saw that with Wild, Wild of Fury. Um, and the fourth round, it was a jab, wasn't it? It was a stiff, great jab. And I don't know why Charles Mike doesn't use his jab more. He's a big bloke. I mean, he, you could tell he's a good couple of inches bigger than Ortiz with a bigger reach. Um, well, he didn't. Apparently, he hasn't got a, a bigger reach, but it certainly looked like it that way. Um, I didn't think that yeah, Ortiz, on paper, had a two-inch reach advantage. He didn't look like that at all last night. Um, but he just stopped using the jab, and of course, whenever you stop using the jab, that was going to lend it yourself to Ortiz closing the distance. And you could see the left hand being a vicious Cuban southpaw. He was just waiting to time you, and he started as I thought, and I see KO Martin around the seven eight mark. It was round six. He just waits to time, get the get the distance, time the shot, because Lewis Ortiz, especially at his age now, is a very effective cow puncher. You're not going to see someone at his age you know, be a flurry fighter. He's not a Gerard Anderson, a young, hungry, up-and-coming fighter anymore who probably throws, you know, 100 punches around. He's he's, he's older, he, he, he paces himself, and he times you. And that's ultimately what he did with Martin. I knew he'd find the distance, find the timing. Um, but to be fair, I, I agree with the judges. I had him losing three to four first rounds. Two of them, uh, you'd have to say, are 10-8. So he was well behind on the scorecards, but he won the fifth round. You could see just starting to uh, find his timing, get the, you know, because Martin's a big lump and he's awkward. Um, you know, he doesn't throw orthodox punches all the time. And sometimes he throws from weird angles. Um, he kind of throws them leaning back. And, I th- and then suddenly he'd be ping. He'll lean forward and grab you, like, get, get you on right in the face with a vicious jab. And that's what did for Ortiz in the fourth. But the fifth round, you could see Martin again. You have to question his stamina. You could see he visibly slowed. He wasn't, you know, uh, prance, dancing around the ring, prancing around the ring like he was the opening rounds. Ortiz closed the gap on him, and it was only a matter of time. Now, the first knockdown was like a circus act, wasn't it? Um, you know, he floored Martin, but he got his hand stuck in the rope. So, quite rightly, the ref stopped, stopped counting. Um, and ironically, getting his hand stuck in the ropes probably helped Martin. It gave him a few precious seconds to get his senses. But of course, what did he do? He went straight back into the firefight. This is the same thing he did with Joshua when he got knocked out. When he got floored the first time, he should have, you know, been careful. He should have just weathered the storm, stayed on the outside. Instead, he tackled it head on. He was still quite dazed. And Ortiz landed with some a few vicious left hands. And that was all she wrote. Now, people are saying, oh, it was an early stoppage. Nonsense. Martin was on Queer Street. He was out of the game. He was bloodied, beaten. He was staggering. The referee made the perfect call. He would have got hurt had that fight continued because Ortiz is a vicious finisher. But, um, obviously, there's a bit of a melee afterwards. Martin's unhappy that the ref stopped it. I'm not sure he knew exactly where he was, to be honest with you. Ortiz just pushed, pushed him away saying, listen, get out of my face. The fight was over. It was nice to see after a bit of a chat from the ref and their teams that they eventually did embrace. But listen, Ortiz is a level above Martin. Uh, but I knew what happened. Ortiz looked overweight. He looked sluggish. He looked ring rusty. And I said he'd give away the first couple of rounds. I didn't think he'd be flawed. But he certainly gave away the f- at least the first three rounds of that fight. Some say he lost the first four. Um, so he, on that performance, he looked like an old fighter. On that performance, he's not top five anymore. On that performance, he's going to get cleaned out by Joyce. I think he'd get cleaned out by Parker. I think he'd get cleaned out but obviously by Fury, Wilder, Joshua. Um, I think Ruiz beats him as well. So, you know, he, he's going down that pecking order for sure. I think Huey Fury would beat him as well. People laugh at that. But, you know, Huey Fury, young, prime, getting better. I think he'd be too slick and too hungry for Ortiz. I think it would be competitive, but I think he'd stay out that range. I think Ortiz has significantly slowed down. He was never a fast fighter anyway. You could see he was pacing himself against um, Wilder, but to, this fight was almost pedestrian. But, you know, you, like you say, the last thing that leads a fighter is their power. If you 
you let him get near you and he starts to time you, you're going to be in trouble. I just don't think the elite will get let Ortiz get near him. And I think he'll, they will clean his clock now before he starts getting his range with that left hand. Like I said, a bit of an ugly fight. Uh, sort of, you know, sort of both fighters, not tentative, but rusty. Um, both fighters suspect with their chins. I think Ortiz's punch resistance has gone. Uh, for sure, after the Wilder fight, you know, it's no longer there, and that's what happens when you get KO'd. Martin's punch resistance has always been questionable, and for now, it's a long road back. But for Ortiz, he, he, he elevates himself into title contention. I just don't think he's going to get it. I don't think he's going to beat uh, a number one man free position um, unless he lucks out and gets one of the, you know, the I what call the C list Europeans. Um, but apart from that, you know, I think it's a long road down now uh, for Ortiz. I don't think he's going to win the world title. As for Martin, I think now he's going to be what we call a stepping stone for the up-and-coming fight. I think he'll probably fight the up-and-coming Americans, get a few paydays, but I can't see either man getting world titles or world title contentions. It was an entertaining fight, but ultimately it was a fight that showed both are way off the pace against the elite now.